Hello and welcome to Science Monitor, your favorite weekly news show on science, technology, invention and innovation. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you. First of all, wishing you all a very happy and safe Diwali festival. In today's episode, we will talk about the achievements of CSIR, one of the premier scientific organizations in the country, completing its 80 years and also tell you about a smart electric socket developed by a school student to prevent electric shock. There is lots more science news coming up, but first, let's take a look at the headlines from this week. 80 years of achievements and future roadmap of CSIR, remembering the contributions made in nation building since its inception. 11 women scientists selected in the Women's Involvement in Science and Engineering Research Program. This first batch under the Indo-German Science and Technology Center will get an opportunity to participate in projects in both the countries. A school student designed a smart socket to protect against electric shock. This innovative project of young innovator displayed at DST's Inspired Manak Exhibition and Competition 2022 held in New Delhi recently. And the premier scientific institute of the country is developing technology in petroleum sector. CSIR's Indian Institute of Petroleum at Dehradun has been providing solutions in this area for over six decades. And now the news in detail. Remembering the achievements of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research or CSIR, which completed 80 years of its establishment on September 26, Dr. Jitendra Singh, Union Minister of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, held a press meet on October 14, 2022. Dr. Kalai Selvi, Director General of CSIR, was also present on the occasion. During this meeting, the remarkable research work carried out by CSIR for the last 80 years was appreciated and CSIR's future roadmap was also discussed. A Science Monitor report on this press conference. The Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, a nodal agency of research and development, which played an important role in building India, completed 80 years of its establishment on the 26th of September 2022. During this time, CSIR made progress and work to make life accessible to Indian citizens and continuously provide scientific solutions for the country's industrial development. 37 CSIR laboratories and institutes spread across the country are working continuously in every field of science and technology. During the corona pandemic, CSIR played a vital role in handling the situation from rapid vaccine manufacturing and saving the lives of millions. A press conference was organized on the 14th of October to discuss the achievements of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. The meeting was addressed by Dr. Jitendra Singh, Union Minister of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, and Dr. N. Kalai Selvi, Director General CSIR. Each of our laboratories has been uh, successful in distinguishing itself in one or the other way. Like, for example, as she was mentioning, the drone came from Bangalore, the heliwatt technology came from Hyderabad, the Aroma mission and the Purple Revolution came from Jammu. The first hydrogen fuel bus came from Pune. The steel slag, what she was referring to for the road construction frame from your Delhi laboratory. And uh, now we also, with the encouragement and uh, endorsement received from the President CSIR, the, the Prime Minister, I think another major achievement was that the Traditional knowledge digital library has now been made accessible and open to the other stakeholders as well, which was earlier on limited only to the patent holders. And we have also engaged in uh, with the Ministry of Culture in an exercise of opening science. Dr. N. Kalaya Selvi, Director General CSIR, 
presented a report detailing the achievements of CSIR over the past 80 years where more than 3,400 scientists, more than 4,000 technical personnel and about 5,500 PhD students are working tirelessly supported by the administrative staff. She said that CSIR, along with its scientific research, has taken the initiative to take the scientists out of the laboratory for social upliftment. Be the change brought by the Purple Revolution in the inaccessible areas of Jammu or the upliftment being done using local resources in the northeastern states, research to enable the leather industry or research on developing biofuels, developing Hansa NG helicopter in the aerospace sector or to carry out research on better road construction across the country. CSIR laboratories have worked to reach the last person of the society with simple scientific interventions. Dr. Jitendra Singh, Union Minister in his address, appreciated the contributions of CSIR and stressed the integration and coordination of industry, academia and research. During this press conference, Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh and Dr. Kalai Selvi, Director General CSIR, also answered the questions posed by the press. We are now finding our road ahead for the next few years because country is now running through a very, very important period which we call it as Amartukal. And from 75 years, we are now marching towards 100 years of India's independence. So by the time we'll be celebrating the 100 years of India's independence in the year 2047, we from CSR, we should also get ourselves geared up in what are the best ways we can really take up the scientific visions of this country. And therefore, we had vision document, we had this vision document related meetings, lab wise, 37 labs. Uh, thanks to again the uh, former uh, leader, he has taken 37 meetings with labs, therefore lab-based thematic visions we realized. Then eight teams, eight meetings we held with the thematic directorates. With these 45 meetings now, CSR has arrived at a final vision document. Today, India stands at the forefront in many fields as compared to other developed countries of the world and the tireless efforts of CSIR have contributed significantly in taking the country to this place. The next vision of CSIR is to develop innovative solutions, not only for India but for the entire world, keeping in mind the challenges like green technology and food security by promoting integrated research. Under the Women's Involvement in Science and Engineering Research or the VISA program launched under the Indo-German Science and Technology Center, 11 women scientists were felicitated recently. These selected women scientists will be provided financial assistance to participate in the ongoing research and development projects under bilateral cooperation between India and Germany. Here is a Science Monitor report on the Visor Award organized in Delhi. The Department of Science and Technology, Government of India is running several programs to promote women researchers' participation in the fields like science, technology, engineering and mathematics or STEM. International cooperation programs are also part of these efforts. This includes the Weiser program started under the Indo-German Science and Technology Center established jointly by the Department of Science and Technology and the Federal Ministry of Education and Research of Germany. The program called on women researchers from both the countries to send applications under the Women's Involvement in Science and Engineering Research or Weiser program. On 18th of October, 11 women researchers from the first batch of applications were awarded for the VISA 2022 in New Delhi. The awards were given to 10 Indian and one German female researcher in the presence of His Excellency Dr. Philippe Ackermann, Ambassador of Germany to India and Vice Chancellor of Jawaharlal Nehru University. Advisor to DST and co-chairman of the Indo-German Centre for Science and Technology, S.K. Varshane, was also present. Department of Science and Technology has been promoting international cooperation. So idea is to connect our people to the best of the groups so that they could work on 
and developing technology solutions for the challenges which are faced by our society and we are unable to find answers ourselves. So taking advantage of the facilities or the strength of the partner organization in other country, we are promoting international cooperation. This is a joint center promoted by two governments. So uh, Department of Science and Technology and German Ministry of Education and Research, they are the main stakeholders. These women researchers will now be employed in academia, research institutes or industries in partner countries and participate in ongoing R&D and industrial projects through bilateral cooperation. These women researchers will be given financial support to participate in and collaborate on the projects. They need not apply for project grants separately. The selected women researchers will have the opportunity to work on international projects in all areas of science, technology, engineering and mathematics for three years or till the completion of the project. Apart from this, they will also get the opportunity to work in another country for one month every year. Research, if it, it, if it should be successful nowadays, has to be international, has to be international. You will not get really uh, convincing results if you don't connect with the international community. And one thing about India which always convinced me or struck me in a, in a very, very um, strong way was this openness towards international research. There is a genuine open-mindedness when it comes to research in India to reach out to, to other countries, to reach out to to other universities, to other research institutions. And you are the living proof of that. Yeah? Uh, you are uh, working with institutions, with universities that are really on the other side um, of the world in a, in, in a sense, but still you will work together on one subject, on one issue, and <coughs> hopefully you will um, bear a result uh, in the not so far future uh, together with your German colleagues. I'm very proud of that. I think that's what it is about German-Indian cooperation. Women are hugely underrepresented in the STEM field for a variety of reasons. There has been some improvement in the situation thanks to decisions taken over the last few years, but the imbalance exists. Launching programs like WISER will surely inspire gender equality and bring women to leadership positions in science and technology. A student from Panchkula, Haryana has designed a smart socket to protect children from electric shock. This project, which was showcased in the national level competition under DST Inspired Manak Award, can be an economical and eco-friendly alternative to expensive plastic sockets. To know what is this smart socket and how it works, watch this Science Monitor report. Sockets are installed everywhere to use electrical appliances in our homes, offices and business centers. But even after many changes, especially small children in homes remain at risk of getting electrocuted by these open sockets. This problem has been addressed by a student of Panchkula in Haryana. The student has developed a smart electric socket in his project prepared under the Inspire Manak Award Exhibition and Project Competition 2022 of the Department of Science and Technology. The sensor-based socket automatically cuts off the current as soon as the child tampers with it and automatically resumes the current as soon as the danger is averted components which I have used in my project are the Arduino Uno relay module, IR sensor, jumper cable, extension board and a bulb. So let me show you the working of my project now. So what is the working is that when the finger will come in contact with the holes of the socket, the bulb will be in its on condition. We have used the bulb as an indicator. So the bulb will be in its on condition which will indicate that the circuit has been uh, broken from the back side with the help of the relay. Kushagra has used Arduino Uno Relay Module, IR Sensor, Jumper Cable, Extension Board and a Bulb to make its smart socket. As soon as the sensor senses the touch of a finger on the socket hole, 
the relay module disconnects the power supply and as soon as the hand is released, the relay module reconnects the power supply based on the information provided by the sensor. The bulb on the socket turns on and off like an indicator which shows whether current is coming to the socket or not. Plastic is not used inside this socket, thus it is also eco-friendly. Three major advantages of our project are number first, it is very cost effective because only three major products which we have used are the Arduino Uno, relay module and the IR sensor and for automating the house with the main circuit we have to use only the two main Arduinos and number second is that we, we know that the socket behind the sockets we use the shutters so the shutters are made of plastic and they are not eco-friendly so, but in our project we have not used uh, the, any of the shutters and uh, and we have only used the uh, sensors for the actuators and so this will indicate that we, our project is fully automatic and it is eco-friendly and number third the uh, we have to our project is mainly based for saving the children this innovative project prepared by a school student was showcased in the national level exhibition and project competition 2022 of DST held in New Delhi. This innovation of the younger generation greatly influenced the people. Though the solution is still at the project stage, but if startups in this sector take this idea to a large scale, then a safer, eco-friendly and cost-effective socket option can be developed. On this program, we also introduce you to important scientific institutions of the country. In this episode, we will introduce you to the scientific research carried out at CSIR Indian Institute of Petroleum in Dehradun. Over the last six decades of its establishment, the institute has provided the best petroleum technology solutions to the country. Researchers at this institute are also involved in research and development on renewable energy sources. Here is a Science Monitor special report on CSIR IIP Dehradun. The use of fossil fuels, the never-ending need for these fuels and also the negative impact on the environment and the depleting natural resources. These are some of the biggest challenges facing humankind today and finding solutions to these problems require the exploration of green and innovative alternatives to non-renewable energy sources. Working in this very direction is the Indian Institute of Petroleum, Dehradun, under the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Established on the 14th of April 1960 as a constituent laboratory of CSIR, the institute has provided many successful technologies and solutions to the petroleum industry regarding the quality of petroleum and its proper usage. In addition, cooperation in petroleum policy making and evaluation of petroleum production and its utilization has been a big part of the institute's mandate. With its technological advancements, the institute has established itself as a multidisciplinary research institute, not only at the national level but at the international level also. The Indian Institute of Petroleum has also played an important role in ensuring the exploration and supply of fuel in the country. We see this energy environment nexus as our core mandate. In India, we are an energy deficient country, we import a lot of energy. And yet, the more energy we use, the more fingers are pointed at our country that we are having an impact on the environment. So we have to use our energy judiciously and we have to import as little energy as possible. Keeping in view an increased demand for environmental protection and renewable sources of energy, the Indian Institute of Petroleum is continuously working towards non-fossil fuel and renewable energy alternatives. Its efforts have resulted in the development of a technology to convert plastic into fuel, which has created a new alternative to non-renewable energy while also fighting plastic pollution. IIP's biofuel technology has also been successful. Apart from vehicular fuel, jet fuel is also being prepared using this technology, which achieved success in blended form. 
Regarding other core technologies the institute has developed delayed coking technology which has been adopted by Numaligarh refineries in Assam. In addition, the institute has also developed a method for the conversion of light naphtha to LPG and high octane gasoline, simultaneous production of US grade gasoline and pure benzene from FCC naphtha and an advanced jaggery furnace for sugarcane farmers. Recently, a state-of-the-art anti-corrosion salt spray machine has been installed at the institute which provides great strength to its research work. Self-reliance in essence is a very big word. I think as the world is globalized, we in fact have to collaborate more. So, I would say that if a technology is invented in Israel or in the Philippines or in South Africa or Europe, we don't have to say it's not indigenous, so I don't want to adopt it. What we have to see is what is good about it. Can we do better indigenously? And if we cannot, let us still bring the best possible technologies to India and then apply Indian integration of technology with a uniquely Indian ecosystem. Conversely, just because there's a very good technology in the US or somewhere else, we shouldn't just blindly bring it to India. We must see how it fits our ecosystem and our economics. The Indian Institute of Petroleum also acts as a training center for technology development and to meet the demand for skilled human resources at the national and international levels. The contribution of the institute, which is playing an important role in building a self-reliant India, is incomparable as we move from fossil fuels to a renewable fuel-based world. And now let's have a quick look at some other developments that have made news in the field of science and technology in our special segment, Science Express. An e-portal has been launched by the Regional Centre for Biotechnology, RCB, an autonomous institute of DBT as part of a special campaign for the disposal of pending matters of the Government of India. The Department of Biotechnology is giving special attention to digitization, which will result in better record management, improved work efficiency, increased transparency and also contribute towards a sustainable future. This academic portal prepared by the Regional Centre for Biotechnology will help solve many academic matters for students. On the occasion of the launch, the Secretary of the Department of Biotechnology, Dr. Rajesh S. Gokhale, congratulated RCB for launching a student-friendly academic portal and said that the RCB being a nodal institute for the academic activities of the department has taken the right initiative, which can be emulated by other DBT autonomous institutions. All academic activities in RCB and affiliated institutions, including attendance, work allocation, service recording, rule formation, research proposals and progress reports, will now be developed and carried out through the academic portal. Scientists at the Center for Nano and Soft Matter Sciences, an autonomous institute of the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, have developed a new material that will increase the light output efficiency of bright light emitting LEDs to make them more durable and economical. LEDs are generally highly sought after as general light sources, but achieving the desired durability and brightness has challenged scientists looking for new materials. Scientists at SENSE have now discovered that the simple plasma treatment of inorganic materials of cesium, lead halide nanocrystals can enhance stabilization manifold, leading to bright and stable LEDs. Plasma treatment induces the cross-linking of the organic modules olelamine present on the surface of the nanocrystals. It forms a robust network of ligands, providing better encapsulation and higher photoluminescence intensity. In addition, they have introduced a new anti-counterfeiting application that uses a method of plasma treatment to create covert double-layer security tags. Researchers at the Indian Institute of Technology, Jodhpur, have designed a robotic trainer that can be used for physiotherapy to treat lower limb disabilities. It's important to note that limb disability is a serious health challenge in India. 
This may be caused by various reasons, but the biggest weapon to make the dysfunctional organ active again is physiotherapy. Most of the robotic systems currently used in this operate based on motion in the sagittal plane only. In the latest study, researchers have presented the design of a robot that can handle all three surfaces. That is, it can provide motion to the ankle in the sagittal, transverse and coronal planes. The results of this study have been published in the International Journal of Advanced Robotic Systems. That is all in today's edition of Science Monitor. Keep sending your feedback and suggestions through email. Our email ID is indiascience at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at vigyanprasar, A50, Sector 62, Noida 201309, Uttar Pradesh. So, we'll take your leave now. See you again next week. Till then, stay safe and think scientifically. Bye for now.